Now this is kind of one of those shorter instructional kind of videos. This here is a slip joint. And uh, well, a lot of people really don't like taking them apart, myself included. I can at least kind of show you how to uh, put these darn things back together once you have taken them apart. So with this, it's got the pivot screw here and it's also got uh, one going through the end here. And if I remember right, yeah, that's just a barrel. Okay. So let me find my little. Uh, sure, leave that. Having Isosamo. Um, it's a spudger made out of spring steel. It really doesn't matter. And obviously, if you care um, about scratching anything up, you'll probably want to use uh, something plastic. Um, I do have a lot of plastic spudgers as well, but uh, I just like how secure these things feel. Okay, so this guy's got bronze washers on the inside. That's fine. But as you can see, uh, the uh, titanium backspacer here uh, has a couple of anchor points, one back here, and then a pen internally here. And then that port that has a lot of, uh, force heading downward. So. Try and get this, uh, blade off. I'm making headway. At least it kind of looks that way. Yeah, I'll just work that a little bit. Okay. So yeah, you can see this has a lot of pressure forcing downwards and it's <laughs> really not in your best interest to try to flex that back up. But if you are at this point um, and you really do want to get this back together, as I don't blame you for, because uh, what use is a knife if it's in pieces? is um, you will uh, take that and actually just fully mount the darn thing. Um, so yeah, this has got that pin there and uh, the back spacer. The other screw is actually to remove the, uh, the carbon fiber inserts on this, so no need to do that. All right, so this already has the um, guys there. I'm actually gonna take this guy and uh, shove him back onto the pivot. This is kind of where uh, you can see it's got a little bit of a notch, but uh, this is where I'll actually uh, do that first. And then I shall replace the spring. All right. So here's kind of the trick you got going for you. Uh, where you're like, well, how the hell do I do that? Essentially, you want to come in a little bit lower. And you can kind of use that to leverage that thing back up. And you can uh, slide them right back in fairly easily. At least you should be able to. Because once you get uh, that back part of the tang to uh, wedge that up, works out all right. This is uh, kind of the, the Chris Reeve way of doing things. And yes, it is going to be a little bit difficult. That's just kind of the nature of uh, press fit slip joint kind of things. But uh, they're nice and simple. There we go. Just slides right back on there. So obviously you're going to want to uh, put the uh, little brass portion. Well, that's again way too much. Uh, sure, why not? 
Okay, cool. Now you can uh, slap your scale back on that side. Sometimes that gets a little strange um, because it's adding pressure from the from this back area. Also, there's a pin, at least for this particular one on the inside here, that you want to make sure that you uh, clear. And sometimes some of those things are a little challenging to uh, get all back together. That doesn't really go for all slip joints, but it certainly goes for this one. So... Well, I will at least slap the pivot screw on. Probably not full tight, but I will get it at least a little bit in there. So you can kind of hold that closed, and then you can uh, kind of work the rest of it into where it needs to be. And what I've done with this guy um, in the past because that pin on this particular one is uh, kind of a giant pain in the ass, is go ahead and put that all up in place. And you can see that the, uh, the pin is still sticking out, making it a little proud. Uh, so, kind of like what I did with uh, the uh, ball bearing kind of thing is, uh, well, you see exactly where that pen is, which for us, it's right here. And I will slap that on there to uh, help not do anything. And uh, yeah, just give it a little uh, gentle squeeze. At that point, you can uh, finish up the whole tightening thing. Being careful, obviously, not to uh, strip anything out. Alrighty, and that guy's back together. Obviously, I do need to uh, keep them a little bit uh, tighter there. Yeah, there we go. No blade play whatsoever. So, uh, there you go. It does take a little bit of force, but uh, nowhere near as much as you might think for trying to put a slip joint back together if you've taken it apart for maintenance. This guy, I really like this guy. It's a... Um, I've done the cut test already on this. This was uh, in S90V. If I can uh, not have it all blown out, that would be nice. <laughs> there, S90V. Sorry, I hit the microphone. <laughs> but yeah, nice uh, shred uh, carbon fiber handles. Um, the S90V actually did really well at, uh, what was it, 730 cuts? Or 700, right around there. I don't know. It's not right in front of me. But uh, actually acted a lot like uh, S90V should. And uh, I did just recently, today even, uh, resharpen this guy from doing that rope cut test. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, S90V is a challenge to sharpen, we'll say that, but uh, yeah, I really had the problem here where it finally rolled, and well, that's a bad example, but yeah, we're back to, uh, we're back to nice and sharp. I will say though, that um, the fit and finish on this was absolutely perfect perfect out of the box and since I've uh, not since I've taken it apart but since I've actually done um, the uh, the cutting with it um, there are some uh, uh, just slight intolerances where my fingernail will like catch here kind of thing and it, it seems mostly that it's uh, the carbon fiber in general. 
um, which means it would probably be fairly easy to uh, actually just take some sandpaper and uh, kind of realign everything there. But yeah, the other thing I can say was that the action on this was not good when I got it. <laughs> it was pretty darn grindy overall. Uh, but that's something you deal with with um, some knives where they, they have a break-in period. And this one certainly did. But uh, it's nice and smooth now after, you know, playing around with it for a few hours. Nice walk and talk on it. All that sort of good stuff. So, yeah, I really like this guy. It's, uh, it's the only Mazwan Mokhtar uh, design that I have because most of them are uh, really highly valued right now. And, uh, well, it's just uh, some of the prices uh, hurt my wallet a little bit too much, so they haven't become mine yet. But I'll probably pick some up from when I get a little bit more uh, opportunities to do so. But... Yeah, this guy's called the Fang Tooth. Uh, I will do a, a full review of him a little bit later on because uh, it is kind of a higher number. Uh, it was like what, 188, I think. So yeah, we'll get around to it. But yeah, that's uh, basically how you go about um, fixing up and uh, putting back together a slip joint. Um, especially if... Uh, you have the uh, the back spring kind of under tension and have to have it that way before you put the blade back on. Some of them are a little bit different and more convenient, but this is kind of uh, the way that, uh, well, I mean, Chris Reeve knives kind of suggest that you should do this for their slip joints as well. So, you know, it's, you know, great and suggested from... Uh, uh, really large and uh, successful manufacturers. So, cool. Anyway, that was a fun little video. Uh, anyway, as always, uh, hope you uh, enjoy yourself. It's a wonderful rest of your day, yo.